Hello. Today is Wednesday, March 10th. And finally, I feel so good today. And it is just so encouraging to feel this good and to feel like myself. I like got emotional about it earlier, but it's amazing. And it just gives me hope that I'm going to have good days. <laughs> um, so I, this is this video, if you watch my first video, I mentioned I wanted to like weekly, I don't know if I'll do it weekly or monthly, but kind of do like a recap and answer some like of the same questions um, every time about like what's been encouraging and some like spiritual insights and like how I'm growing. And so that's my plan for this video. And um, today just feels like a really good day to record it. So um, a quick recap, you know, this is a week and a day after my first chemo infusion. And it was a rough week if you watched my last video about just like how everything went. It was like lots of up and downs and it kind of just felt like every day I thought I was going to get better the next day and then there's just something new the next day. And then even after I, I posted that video about the recap, I ended up back at the hospital getting some IV fluids um, because I was really dehydrated and that did help. Um, and that was yesterday actually. And then now today I really do. I mean, I'm not a hundred percent, but I just, I just feel like my, my, Mike myself. And I hope you could tell in this video that like, it's, I'm like almost a hundred percent. I don't know. Maybe I'm 95% or something. Um, I'm still dehydrated. Um, I getting pretty good headaches and a lot of it has to do with my appetite. I just don't have an appetite and um, I, I think it's from the some of my chemo medication and then also I had like from just being dehydrated and having all the stomach issues it just made me not want to eat for a couple days and so I think I'm hungry and then I'll try and I'll just take a couple bites of something um, but I am like doing some things to make sure that I do get nutrition. I'm staying hydrated with water and like Gatorade and juice and then I got some like shakes and things that I'm eating. And the only thing that kind of does sound appetizing lately has been soup, but I hate canned soup and I'm not about to make homemade soup. And so, <laughs> um, I, I really have been loving bone broth. That's what's in here. I haven't had coffee in like four days cause it just is gross. Um, to, it just tastes different to me. I'm going to hopefully next week. I love coffee. I'm not giving it up. I don't think, but, um, I have been drinking bone broth and that tastes good and like broth and I had ramen noodle soup. <laughs> um, but soup does kind of sound appetizing lately. Um, so yeah, my appetite, I'm working on it. I'm going to get it back. Gotta, I gotta make sure that, you know, cause if I'm not fueling myself, then like that adds to like my, how I'm like feeling mentally and, you know, feeling run down and tired and I want to just get healthy and I want to get back. Um, still having a little tummy issues at this point, but not like nearly as bad. Um, the other, the other big, kind of big thing right now has been uh, having dry mouth. And so last night I did a bunch of research and ordered some things that will hopefully help me with that. That like actually keeps me up at night and keeps me from sleeping. And then also my, this is all normal, but like my nose is extremely dry and not like producing any um, moisture or anything. And so it just like hurts and even like around my nose hurts. Um, I'm breaking out a little, but I don't know, that could also just be from like, it could be from the steroids I had taken last week, or it could be from like hormones from pregnancy, or also, you know, like chemo's doing a lot to my hormones, it's just messing with a lot of things. I never break out, like, I went like my whole pregnancy, like when, I was, when I'm pregnant, I have like really perfect skin, it's wonderful, so I don't know. So that's kind of how I'm feeling. Um, so my first question I want to answer is like, what's been encouraging and today it has been the weather it is like almost 70 degrees outside and it's the middle of march kind of we usually get a couple days like this i went outside with charlotte and i'm also just feeling good today and this is when i got emotional and i like told paul i'm like paul this is everything's gonna be okay like it was just a wonderful gift from god the weather today and it's just beautiful out and it just makes me feel better you know like sunshine is medicine and um i don't know it made me think about the um 
the springtime and gardening and picking up sticks and yawn, lawn, yard work and feeding the birds. And it was just like super helpful um, to my spirit today. It was so wonderful. I'm playing outside with Charlotte. She was like riding her tricycle and we're gonna go for a walk when the girls wake up from their nap. I'm so excited. Um, anyway, so that, that's been encouraging. I actually told Paul, I said, Paul, I think we need to go move to Florida and finish my chemo treatment there. I think I will just be golden if we just move to Florida and just or just spend the next five months in Florida. <laughs> We're not going to do that, but it, I don't know. I think it would help. Um, my next question I want to answer is who has been encouraging? And this also is kind of a little bit of what, but you know, there's like a, the quote, you know, sunshine is medicine, but also like friendship and laughter is medicine. And that really has been wonderful is like, I just feel better when I see people I love and I talk to people I love and it just like, even if it's not deep or like serious conversation or even, which sometimes it gets there, but it just is encouraging to me. I had a friend come over and just stop by for an hour in the middle of the day this week, which was really nice. And my mom came over today and, um, I've like gotten messages which are like really encouraging. If I don't respond to them right away, it's usually just because uh, of the, the kids <laughs> or, you know, like taking a nap or something like that. But I try to respond to everyone. Um, but that's been really encouraging. Um, we had a, f a girl at our church send us like a little care package and um, it, was, it was just so sweet. It was just like so um, encouraging to... Um, she like sent something little for Charlotte and Abby and Paul and I and like a little handwritten note and it was just it was just really sweet so thank you Grace um also if anyone when people send me messages on Facebook a lot of times people have been sending me songs and I always like put them on a YouTube playlist for me to like listen to um like during chemotherapy or just like when I have time like throughout the day and those have been really encouraging I, I love music but um I don't know, lately music has also just been so helpful for my spirit. Good Christian music and songs. And when someone like, you know, sends me something that like made them think of me or that's just helpful to them, that's a song that they like. Um, I don't know, I like listen to it and it's been helpful to me too. And I just find myself like weeping or praising God. That's been really encouraging. I love, love music. You know, music is a wonderful blessing that God gave us and I take it for granted sometimes. Um, but you know, when you like hear a good song and you just like relate to like every single thing, <laughs> um, that's always really nice. And, um, I think what else? Oh, if you haven't realized, Paul has been so encouraging. I mean, I feel like all my videos, every other sentence, I'm saying something about Paul. And that really is because he is a wonderful, wonderful husband and wonderful, wonderful leader during this time. And... I'll have to do a video with him sometime because he just, um, he, he's just been awesome during all of this. And it's really hard on him. It's not easy on him, but you wouldn't even know it. Um, and we talk about it, but he's just amazing right now. So he's been really encouraging and, um, you're going to continue hearing lots of stories about Paul. <laughs> um, okay. So the last thing is just kind of like some like ways that God has been working on me during this. And there's been lots, I have lots to share. So I'm gonna try to not make it too long. But the first thing is just so amazing. So Paul has an Audible membership and I love audiobooks and he like had a bunch of extra credits cause he like forgot that he had it. And I went in like months and like around before the new year. So around Christmas and I used some of his credits and I just downloaded some books before we were going to cancel it, which I don't think we did. We need to cancel it still. But he, one of the books I downloaded, I just like thought, oh, this looks like a good book. And it was a book by Elizabeth Elliot. Didn't even think about the title, but I like Elizabeth Elliot. I hadn't read much by her, but a couple years ago, our church did a play and I was, I played, I was Elizabeth Elliot. And I was really loved her story and like did a little bit of research about her life, but I like had been meaning to like do more. And so I downloaded this audiobook and didn't even like think about it. And then this week <laughs> I like was trying to listen to, uh, I was like wanting to listen to an audiobook and I, it was like, it was only three hours long. I'm like, oh, I'll listen to this. 
and I ended up buying the book too. It just came in the mail because I think it's a short book and a short audio and I think I'm going to just like need this, but it is called <laughs> Suffering is Never for Nothing by Elizabeth Elliot. And you can get an audible three hour audiobook or it's just like $11 on Amazon. And I haven't finished it yet. I've like maybe like a third of the way through it, but wow. That is such a God thing that God, that I like got this audiobook a couple months ago, not even knowing about any of this. And then it is just so timely. And like, I'm just like every single word that I'm listening to or reading is just like so helpful. And, um, I'll probably be sharing like more, more with, uh, with you about it. But if you don't know anything about Elizabeth Elliot, she was a missionary with her family and some like other young couples and she lost her husband um, to um, some like um, native people in Ecuador. They had killed her husband. And and that wasn't the only suffering that she suffered in her life. She had also then got remarried and lost that husband, I think either months or just years later to um, cancer, I believe. And, um, and she just like glorifies God through all, all of it. And everything just been amazing so far that I've been listening to. Um, but I'm just going to read one quote in here, or it's kind of like a little paragraph. It says, the deepest thing that I have learned in my life has come from the deepest suffering. And out of the deepest waters and the hottest fires have come the deepest things that I know about God. And I imagine that most of you would say exactly the same thing. And I would add this, that the greatest gifts of my life have also entailed the greatest sufferings. The greatest gifts of my life, for example, have been marriage and motherhood. And let's never forget that if we don't ever want to suffer, we must be very careful never to love anything or anybody. So this is a really in-depth look at suffering and um, really helping me right now, kind of um, God work, working work, working through through this, which is, isn't that also just amazing that, you know, she passed away in like, I don't know, like, in the, within the last 10 years um and, and she was like like very old but like her what like her testimony is still like living on and like helping me and um it, it's just amazing so that's one thing that i'll probably bring up more about um the other thing i wanted to show you was if you don't know me i'm pretty organized and i kind of I'm like a binder person. I'll like make binders for things. And so I of course have to have like a binder to kind of help organize like this part of my life. And so I went to um, Meyer with Paul a while back and got this binder and I put cute, this is actually um, Hebrews 12 verses one through three, which is my favorite um, verse. Um, I'm not gonna show everything in it, but of course it has nice tabs and it has some like medical things I want need to do. Um, the back of it is like really important. It's like when I need to call the doctor and the doctor's numbers, like if I have any of those like certain symptoms. But in the front cover, I have some things I want to share. This is just a piece of paper that has um, a bunch of verses. I think it's front and back, yeah. That actually I made this when, and this is all about kind of verses that were encouraging for like pain and childbirth. I made this when I was pregnant with Charlotte for Paul to read to me when we were at the um, hospital. And these verses are like really applicable right now. I also have, this is something I printed off, but um, I've been like looking at just like the promises of God. And um, this came from like something on Pinterest a while back, but it's like a hundred promises of God. And um, it's just good to like read through. And it, um, it like summarizes each promise like really quickly. Like it says, the Lord will fight for you, Exodus 14, 14. God's mercies are renewed each morning, Lamentations 3, 21, 23. Um, and it's just good to like read and remind myself. And then this is really cool. All of these are like laminated sheets that my uncle Dennis gave me back last summer. And he gave, he himself went through cancer twice, I believe. And, um, the, he like wrote this with a note with my aunt Patsy and, um, was, I don't know, it was just really, really sweet and encouraging. And, um, 
like th this one says, what cancer cannot do? Cancer cannot invade the soul, suppress memories, kill friendship, destroy peace, conquer the spirit, shatter hope, cripple love, corrode faith, steal eternal life, or silence courage. Um, and then there's also um, some verses, laminated uh, healing verses, and um, just scripture, which <laughs> has been really great right now. Um, and then the rest of my binder is mostly medical stuff, so I'm not gonna go through that, I don't think, right now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the last thing, look, it's gonna be a short video too, is I just wanted to, I think I've already shared that I've been just like, when I do my devotions or when I read scripture, I've been like writing down, just writing down truth, and I've been just like praying through that and reminding myself of it because I just like I have to saturate my mind with scripture and God and focusing on him right now or I'll like let like other stuff distract me and I can't do that right now um is two verses that came up this week both in Romans I'll pull them up and um the first one is Romans 5 3 through 4 it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. Um, learning about patience, I have always said, I'm not a patient person. And like, I brag about that, but it's like, you should, we should be patient. And it's like a fruit of the spirit. And it's something that will make us more Christ-like. But I'm learning a lot about patience and like not rushing through this like suffering process and like just accepting it and like growing in it. I'm growing a lot in it. Um, and the other verse was Romans 8, 18 says, for I reckon that suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So like this suffering that I'm going through right now is nothing compared to the glory of God. What he like reveals himself to us. It's nothing compared to um, how great and how good and how wonderful God is. Um, and it's amazing. It's wonderful. So that is uh, kind of what I wanted to share. Again, um, thank you everyone who's been watching these videos and um, like talking to me about them. It's been really helpful to me to make these videos and I plan on continuing as best I can. And um, yeah, so thank you guys.